How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of La Trappe Quad up in this. I'm doing a little bit of a three-part series here, different batches from La Trappe. And on this one, we have batch 13. I forgot to bring the website. Let's go to the website. Let's go to the website and see what we're going on. So this is a Belgian quad from La Trappe, and it is Oak Age. And the cool part about it is, uh, is that you can go... Uh, to their website and actually kind of uh there we go look up the batches on this so this is batch 13 i already did batch what's the one i did the other day eight it was kind of flat uh not in a good way so we're talking about batch 13 they went heavy and hard on these when he first started doing these so we're talking oh 2013 a little bit of symbiot symbioticness kind of going on here and this ooh, oh okay we got a lot going on in this one. Um, this is a split of barrels. So it's 91% Pinot Noir, a Spottenberg Gunder Pinot Noir barrels. Uh, then 4.5% high toast barrels and 4.5% medium toast Akai bar barrels. Uh, it says here, the first drink clearly tastes of soft red wine, followed by wood tannins and smoke that slowly accumulate in the light sweetness of honey. As the beer warms up, huh, there's honey in this? I don't know. Maybe you just taste honey, I guess. The cage is breaking off. That always bodes well. Um, oak becomes more prominent. Beer becomes more tannic. Okay. You gotta love it when the cage actually just breaks off completely. Now, how am I gonna get this open? This is why you guys pay me the big bucks so you can watch me struggle with shit like this. I can get this open, I just don't want to cut myself. <laughs> Or break the bottle. Let's see if we can just get that cage up and over because there's a little bit of slack on it now. I may be able to. God damn it. Where are my tin snips when I need them? I have a shotgun chill. Might be able to open it with that. Plain old scissors. Let's see if they'll cut this, this tin. This tin stuff usually isn't too. There we go. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this sucker rolls. Now, I talked about this in a previous review. I won't talk about it much, but it has a synthetic cork. These corks are red hot nightmares. They're almost impossible to get off. Come on, you son of a bitch. So, now this is the second portion of the show where you guys laugh. Oh my god, I should have brought a wine key. I said that in the first one, too. These are gonna be these are gonna be everybody's favorite reviews. Just watch me struggle. And I actually have a theory that these there we go that these uh, synthetic quirks actually aren't the best. They almost feel like they should have a better seal on them, but I think there's something bad about them because it almost seems like I rarely get a really good aged bottle. With this synthetic cork in it, so let's see. We're gonna know on the hiss and the pop. Actually, yeah, this one's gonna be poopy too. God damn it, Shangies, why are you selling poopy old beer, man? I'm putting it on you guys. You guys have to. You gotta test these, and if they're not good, you need to let people know because you're basically making me waste money, which pisses me off actually. So, don't go to Shangies. Apparently, screw them. Um, so yeah. Definitely lost a ton of its carbonation. Um, and, uh, I mean, it looks nice. It looks like that washed-out tea um, look that you get from, like, a barrel-aged old kind of quad. Very much, like, due to water brown. That kind of stuff going on. So, yeah. It looks the part minus that carbonation. Let's see if we get a nose. A little bit of carbon there. I mean, the nose is actually quite nice. It gives you this nice, rich kind of sweet, um, rich kind of toffee, figgy kind of uh, what you'd expect from kind of an English barley wine more than a Belgian quad, but there's an added sweetness to it. I assume that's the Belgian candy sugar at work. Lighter. Lighter than the nose I had on the other one, um, but still quite nice. I'm not getting a big Pinot thing. I'm not getting a big wine thing. I think that sweetness is just overpowering it. And it just smells nice. It smells nice. Let's dive in. Cheers. Ooh, that's really tasty, actually. Ooh. That is very tasty. 
It is extremely tasty. So I have this thing. It's called a, um, what's it called? Trail keg. It's one of those CO2 kegs. I kind of want to throw this in there and just recarb it. Because I could reforce carb in there. I think it takes a little bit of time, so I'm not going to do that. But, man, this is actually really tasty. It's giving you this nice, beautiful barley wine kind of thing going on. Very much reminiscent of, like, a Hardy's kind of vibe when it comes to an aged barley wine. You get this soft little tartness to it. It's nowhere close to even being sour, but there's this little bit of tartness that I can get from them. Kind of, sometimes I get them from Belgian Dark. Sometimes I get them from English barley wines. But you can tell that this is more driven from a wine aspect than anything else. There's a nice softness to it, a richness to it. I, I attribute most of that to the, uh, to the wood of the beer because since there is no carbonation you expect this thing to be thin as thin could be and while it does have this ever so slightest bit of carbonation lurking in there it is really this soft oak tanniness that's very nice big gobs of vanilla on that that add a mouthfeel that otherwise would not be there because of the lack of carbonation i mean this is this it, it, this seemed much better days when it was carved properly but i will tell you what I'm liking this. I am. As as an old beer person that's okay rolling the dice on on old beer, I have no problems with that. The only problems would be with Shangies because they had shelves and shelves of old beer. You know, buyer beware when it comes to beer. You can say that, but they know these aren't worth it. Um, that's why they're, they're pricing them and blowing them out the way they are. They should just be like, hey, just, you know, these aren't whatever. Maybe I should know because the price was cheaper. Still, anyway. But in the state that this particular batch is in, with this lack of carbonation, I actually really do enjoy it. I would have loved to try it. Actually, I should say, I shouldn't say that. I might have reviewed Bats 13 for all I know. But I could imagine how good this beer was when I actually had a carb on it. And I'm going to tell you what, man. I really do believe the curse of these beers are the synthetic cork. I think the synthetic corks on these just aren't a good... You would think synthetic. You'd think it would act as a better seal for that carbonation my guess is and i know this is above my pay grade i'm guessing these are permeable and by that for those that don't know it um permeable means gas can escape through it um you know cork really doesn't do that while the edges might not seal as perfect as something synthetic at least it's not permeable relatively permeable i think Corks are permeable to an extent, but it's negligible how much oxygen can push through it or, or gases. I'm, I bet you gas can get through this thing because I don't understand how this could not be a good seal. It's a nightmare to get out, so obviously it's got really good contact. They're long AF, so I bet you these are permeable to cer some certain extent. Yeah. Which might not be maybe escape permeable pressure permeable like i don't think that would be an issue for um wine because wine i don't think would suffer from that right yeah maybe that's the case here because it's not really i didn't talk about any kind of oxidation i'm not gonna get a ton of oxidation on this beer to be honest with you the taste is there just lacks carb so either these beers were poopily carved which i highly doubt i mean the trap knows what they're doing i have theories that these are permeable basically what happened was it, it, all the carbonation escaped but it didn't let because of the pressure it didn't let negative oxygen back in that's my that's my massive conspiracy review theory right there for you but anyway um back to the beer um, in its state right now, it's 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 hard to give this like a stellar glowing kind of um, kind of love fest score on this thing because we score everything, don't we? Um, last time I probably did one of these, I probably did. Um, but I like this. I have no qualms paying the eleven dollars and fifty cents I paid for this beer. The other one I did. Um, this one is just I think just so well balanced flavor wise and so for the lack of a better term, kind of softly electric. <laughs> I mean that in that it's it's rich and dynamic, but it's not like to the hilt, two by four to the face um, that I enjoy when I'm drinking right now. Probably one of the better batches I've had, carb or otherwise, at least flavor profile was. If you were to give this to me with some kind of carbonation, I think I'm going gaga. I really do. Shame, 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 shame. 
I'm in the brewery. They probably didn't know what they're doing. More, more on Changi's, but shame on me for not getting a carved one. There you go. Is this one of the better English? Well, I don't know, English barley wines because I, I taste like an English barley wine more than anything else. Is this one of the better barrel aged beers? That's where we'll go. That I've had as late. No, it's not no, it's not yes. We're just going to put it N-A, uh, not applicable, just because of, you know, the carbonation. If the carbonation is there, I think it's up there, if not Ru Mount Rushmore status. Value and availability, like I said, $11.50. I would not say these are worth picking up from Shangies or any of the aged beer Shangies at this point, because it seems like every aged thing I've pulled out of there sands a three-year-old Stillnacht, which if that wasn't, can't hold, or not even three years, year and a half old Stillnacht, that's not going to hold up. That's just weird. Um, but everything else is kind of poopy. So, yeah, take that for what it's worth and leave you with if you like what well, we like this beer. If you like um, if you like flavor over mouthfeel, I mean, this is really de is giving you a rich depth of flavor. So it's more a flavorful thing than a, a textural thing. So if you really kind of lean heavily into, even though, you know, carbonation does deliver a lot more flavor and things like that, we, that's a whole nother story. For the 11 bucks and change, if you were there and be like, I just want to try this because Matt tried it or whatever, I just do third person. I'm going to keep my own ass after the review. Um, yeah. If you like old beer, you'll like this. There you go. We're reviewing the books. Let me know if you had this down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer massive. That's right. Podcasting stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a little of the trap right now. We'll see you next time. Cheers.